Hey guys, so I want to talk about saving selections and how we can use them. And with Revit open, I've just opened up a sample project. You can open up your own or you can get the default set, a sample project that uh, Autodesk gives you. If you don't have that, you can check on their site that you can download it from there. And with this open, we can go to our manage tab and over here on the selections panel we have some options so we have nothing saved or we haven't we have nothing selected so we can't save i do have one um uh selections are already created so an area one and two and then also a selection which is just a generic one that i created but essentially all we would do is if i come down here and let's say we just want to grab this duct filter it, maybe get out all the tags, and then press OK. We can now save it. We'll say area uh, three. When we click out of that, we can load it now. So area three, click OK, and now we've selected those items. So again, same thing, uh, this is area one, this is area two, so I'm gonna load area one. I'm gonna load area two. And now we can select those items. And we can select an ice, or uh, use a selection box on them. We could, you know, create an assembly, whatever it is that we, if it's an item that we need to, uh, we know we need to select multiple times. This might be a good option. Maybe we're using it in different views and we're trying to set up different visibility graphics and we want to grab those items uh, specifically. Um, we can do that. If we want to remove those, if we open up our edit, so with the items selected, you can access all this stuff. So you can load and, and edit as well. So I'm going to exit out of that and just use this one. So we come over here, edit. These are rule-based filters, so this is what you're going to see in your visibility graphics. These aren't necessarily specific to the selected items. You can't select uh, these per se, but if you minimize this, we can come down here and take a look at the different selections, and we can rename, we can edit them. So by doing this, um, and I'll just quickly show it, we'll now be kind of everything will be transparent except for the items that are on this selection and we can start adding and removing items and then after we're done we can finish and then you know if we want to remove one like for example this one I can delete it and say yes and these rule based ones um, the difference is, is these are manually selected. So we've manually selected items, not uh, specific to any parameters. And up here, we um, have rule-based things. And again, this is gonna be visibility graphics uh, specific stuff. And essentially, this is just looking at a parameter and then uh, you're gonna overlay some, some visibility uh, uh, graphics to those items. And the reason why you see it in here in this dialog box is because these selection filters are the reason why you see selection filters in here is because the manual selection filters can be overridden too. So if we go to our visibility graphics by clicking VV, we can come over here to filters and we can actually add them. So here I've got area one and come here. We can, let's say, add area two. Now we have area two there. And if you see, I've actually overridden the default. So by default, it has no over overrides, but here I've already done so. And this is area one, which is right here. You can see nothing's happened. This is because, well, first of all, this one, there's no pattern that was applied. So if I put solid fill and press okay, and it should change the inside to be this color. And these lines aren't being overridden because mechanical supply is actually before that and is is applying its parameter first, pretty much. So actually, if we move this up, it should be fine. And if we press OK, we should see this change colors. 
and you see here um, we have the entire selection that we've saved it's colored this specific way and you may want to do this because of uh, if you've got a bunch of weird items that you're grabbing they're all they all have different parameters and it's just a mess of things save it and you plan on reusing it uh, um, more than once you want to apply different visibility graphics to it you can use this manual selection and then you know do whatever you want uh, visit visibility wise to it um, the only downfall is it isn't going to be live where it's looking at parameters and automatically adding it to the filter based off of that. So, and again, a nice thing is, is this hierarchy of filtered items is going to go based off of where you have it in this list. So if I move this mechanical supply back up, that's actually going to override these lines. Um, the outside lines of this mechanical duck and change it back to blue. So just keep that in mind before you go off and actually um, start editing your filters. You know, for example, your first thing might be to come in here and uh, change this blue to no override. Then, okay. That's gonna work as well. It's just that now you've lost that filter. Um, and if it's something you want to come back to, uh, that's definitely not what you want to do. Um, so just, you know, make sure whatever the primary uh, filter is, if they're looking at the same exact elements, just move it up. Because now uh, you're not getting that those elements uh, applied to the rest of the systems that aren't being overridden in your manual selection. So again, this isn't this isn't uh, specific to just uh, mechanical uh, equipment, but pretty much whatever you select, you can start um, you can start messing with visibility if that's something you want, or you can reload it um, the selection for future use if you want to mess with different views, or if you just want to you know load it and then grab that area and then. Do a selection box into that area if that's something you you're continuously doing throughout the project and having to reselect each time this might be a better method it's just save a selection it's not doing anything it's not caught it won't cause any behind the scenes problems but after you do that um and it comes out you know it becomes out of sync after the um model you know iterations of the model you may want to remove it and maybe uh um remove it if you're not Plan, if you don't plan on actually uh, selecting a bunch of items in the future, but if you are, just re-select whatever the items are. So hopefully this helps you uh, kind of use the selection tool. Uh, it's definitely handy if you if you plan on using it in that way. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot.